This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The goal of today's show is to have a little bit of something for everyone between baseball, NFL, and some NASCAR at the end, which is probably just for me. We've got the Field of Dreams game for tonight in baseball. Cubs versus Reds being played in Dyersville, Iowa. That was fun last year. We'll talk about that, what my model says about that game, and more. I'm going to break down my favorite NFL Week 1 bets here. We have not had that on the show yet because we've been in a daily format for just a couple of days now having a chance to look at those week one lines regular season lines we talked about preseason stuff with joe ostrowski on yesterday's show if you want some thoughts on that check that one out but then we'll wrap up with some nascar bets for richmond i am high on a couple drivers in the cup series and high on two drivers in the truck series as well we'll talk about what my numbers like if you don't want to hear nascar i'll shove it at the end so no worries there. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com for what should be a pretty fun show for today. We'll start things off with the Field of Dreams game in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you subscribe to Covering the Spread. I mentioned that we had Joe Ostrowski on to break down NFL week number one. Again, we are here regular season or preseason week number one. We're here every weekday breaking down some bets that our numbers like, trying to get you more betting content and info to help you fill out some good bet slips. As always, uh, get each of these podcasts by subscribing to the Covering the Spread podcast. Feed. Tomorrow, JJ Zacharyson will be on to break down his favorite player props, uh, season-long per- player props. We'll talk to him about that, building out projections, and much more. JJ's had a lot of success when we've had him on here uh, the past couple of years as well. NFL Week 1 odds are out now, and now's the time to try FanDuel Sportsbook if you haven't already. Get in on the action early this season. To help you get started, new FanDuel Sportsbook customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Think your favorite team is making the playoffs? Who is your dark horse to win the Russian title? JJ can answer that tomorrow. Odds for that and more are available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Just sign up, place your first bet, and FanDuel will give you up to $1,000 back in free bets if you don't win. There is no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Louisiana, 1 877 770 Stop. In New York, 1 877 Hope and Wire, text Hope and Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-979. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's talk about this Field of Dreams game coming tonight between the Cubs and the Reds. Second ever game they've done out in Dyersville, Iowa. I grew up in Minnesota, just an hour north of the Iowa border, and went to Dyersville. They had like this like huge like die-cast car store in Dyersville, so I love that place. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And then got to see Field of Dreams, too. It's actually... Pretty fun. Better than it, you may think, just for a baseball field in a cornfield. This one, Cubs versus Reds. And remember last year, it was a home run derby. It was the White Sox versus the Yankees. Final score there was 9-8, to eight, and I believe there were eight total home runs hit. It was absurd the way things went. So obviously, it was an offensive slash homer-friendly environment. It was 82 degrees there. Tonight's temperature, 76 degrees with 70% humidity. So it's a little bit worse than it was last year in terms of offense. It's not a super deep park. So I think that's probably why we saw the home runs last year. It's probably fair to expect a pretty offensive friendly environment to get. The total for this game is at nine right now with minus 106 on the over. I took over eight and a half last night. I wasn't banging the table for it. Like it wasn't a, oh yeah, I got to get this one in. It was okay. Um, I was fine with it. Now that it's nine, I'm probably okay standing pat where it's currently at. But there is a case of the over here if you think that the Dinger Fest we saw last year translates to this year as well. 
The one that my numbers do like for this game is the Cubs money line. The Cubs money line minus 102. The Reds are minus 116. My model has the Cubs at 53% to win this game. I'm treating home field as pretty much neutral for tonight because the Reds do get the bottom of the ninth, and that does matter for sure. But the Cubs, a bit less travel coming from Chicago to Iowa. So I'm treating home field as effectively nothing. I've got the Cubs win odds at 53% uh, versus 50.5% implied. That's a big enough edge for me to bet. And I don't mind doing so because Drew Smiley is a fly ball pitcher. Could be a concern with all the home runs we saw last year, but he's done a much better job recently of suppressing hard contact. This Cubs offense, not bad against lefties. That may help a tiny bit here too. So if I'm looking for one bet in this game, my favorite one would be the Cubs money line at minus 102 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I'm viewing the strikeout department as being pretty efficient here. Drew Smiley is at four and a half with minus 146 in the over. Nick Lodolo, six and a half with minus 152 on the over. I have Lodolo projected for seven flat strikeouts, but his over odds there are not close to 60%, so can't get towards the over there. I have Smiley at 4.08. So his under odds are 59%, and that means there's value with under four and a half being plus 116. So I could bet Smiley under four and a half, but I haven't yet, and I don't think I will. It's based on a small sample uh, because he hasn't pitched a lot this year, hasn't pitched a lot since he came back, where he changed his approach. Longer term, Smiley has been more of a strikeout guy than he has been recently. So although I'm showing value here, it's a pass from me personally on the Smiley under, and I can't get to Lodolo over six and a half either. FanDuel, as of right now, as of this recording on Thursday morning, does not have just plain home run odds. They have two plus home runs. They've got a home run money line parlay. I'm not seeing anything there personally. Um, but if they do go up later, one guy I check into is Seiya Suzuki. He is uh, five to one at Caesars, plus four seventy five at DraftKings. I don't think you'll get him plus six hundred elsewhere. But like, let's say he opens a FanDuel five to one, I'm probably going to give that a lot of consideration. I've been thinking about it at five to one um, at Caesars with FanDuel not open yet. So shop around. I'm not expecting uh, it to get longer than five to one. But even at five to one. I think it's pretty fair. A lot of fly balls against lefties. Again, a dinger-friendly environment. Lodolo does let up fly balls. So of the guys here, Suzuki's my favorite. Patrick Wisdom, also a big fly ball guy versus lefties, but he strikes out a lot. And with the number of strikeouts Lodolo gets, I think that is actually a big consideration. So Seiya Suzuki is the guy I would look to there. I think overall, though, again, the best bet I like for tonight is the Cubs money line at minus one or two. I think that's the best one here. And then Suzuki at five to one to go deep. The second one I consider, depending if you can get that one uh, wherever your available books are. But overall, it should be a fun game for tonight with the Field of Dreams game out in Iowa. OK, let's talk NFL week one regular season because. We're about to get preseason games, which means we're probably going to start to see some lines shift, not just based on injuries, but also because some teams will play well or some players will play well during the preseason. That could shift their odds for week one. So I think this week is probably your final time to get if you want to buy low on a team before numbers move even more. This is the second inflection point coming up here. So I'd like to get in on the a couple week one bets. I, I talked with Joe Ostrowski about preseason. Again, if you want to find that, search that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. But for week one regular season, I have two spreads showing up as being pretty good for week one. Those are the Giants plus six and a half and the Texans plus eight. And those lines are at FanDuel. You can get the Texans plus eight and a half in some other spots. Let's start here with the Giants. Facing the Titans, this is more about the Titans than it is about the Giants. They lost A.J. Brown in the offseason. Traylon Burks not getting a ton of run with the first team offense training camp. And there's no Julio Jones, which means it's Ryan Tannehill with a group of non-elite pass catchers. Tannehill has been fine with A.J. Brown, but is he a guy who can support an offense that doesn't have good pass catches around him? So that doesn't seem great. And plus the Giants are volatile, but in a good way. I would say they got a new coaching staff. They've had improvements along the offensive line uh, via the draft. I don't mind buying into them here. So the Giants plus six and a half, I think is actually a pretty good bet. And the best number you can get is a FanDuel. So I do like that one. I like the Giants here. I'm willing to bet that uh, versus the Titans in week number one. The Texans may be a tougher sell. Uh, I'm a bit more skeptical. I did bet it. So I've, I'm willing to do it. But 
you know, took me more time to talk myself into this one than the Giants one. They're facing the Colts here, and that's why my hesitation is present, because I don't know if my model is properly valuing this Colts offense. I've got them projected to rank 11th in offensive efficiency this year, which is pretty high. But with the way people talk about Matt Ryan and, you know, dismiss Carson Wentz, it's possible that I'm too low because it's possible that Wentz made the supporting cast in Indy look worse than it actually was. Because I don't think the supporting cast is like phenomenal right now. It's like good. It's fine. But it's not the most elite pass catchers, not the best offensive line anymore. They've got some good guys still, but like it's not uh, elite top to bottom. So I'm skeptical of the supporting cast. And Ryan looked kind of cooked at times last year. Like he wasn't bad. He's still super, super smart. That's valuable, but like wasn't chucking it deep as well as he used to in the past. It sounds like Shaquille Leonard used to be Darius Leonard, but Shaquille Leonard now he's probably going to miss week one. The Texans, on the other hand, have a lot of continuity on offense. They've got Pep Hamilton. Uh, he was, I believe, quarterback's coach last year. He's back as the OC. Pass catchers are the same. Davis Mills is back for the full offseason. I prefer the Giants plus six and a half between these two bets, but the Texans plus eight, I don't mind it. Again, you can get it eight and a half, so please do so. Uh, but I think that if we're looking at week one, those are the two numbers that stand out most to me. I'm not sure if the Texans one will move. I think it's more likely uh, that the Giants one moves because we could see the Colts come out in the preseason and look good. That would probably increase some enthusiasm there. So I think the ones I'm more likely to lock in, it's the Giants. Or I have, I've locked in both these, but like the one I think it's a bigger priority to bet would be the Giants. But um, overall, I think it's good to bet both these. My number show value. I believe in my numbers, so I will uh, have those for week number one. We'll talk more about week number one as we get closer to break down some uh, some other stuff that may pop up. Trying to talk myself into a couple more money lines, but we'll see how things shake out in the coming weeks. And again, we'll talk about more NFL with JJ Zacharyson on tomorrow's show. Okay. Let's talk about some NASCAR Richmond. Again, if you don't want to listen to NASCAR, totally get it. Feel free to dip out. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Talk about some player props. But we have NASCAR Richmond, and as mentioned... I'm going to talk about this each week until NFL starts. I'll be sure to dump it at the back end of the podcast so you can dip out if you want. But I like NASCAR. It's my best sport for betting. So why would I not discuss it on a betting-focused podcast? This week, the Cup Series and the Truck Series are Richmond. In Cup, I'm on the Fords. In Trucks, I am on the Vets. I think that is a, a path I am okay with for sure. In the Cup Series, the guys my numbers like most are Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick. I like Logano's outright and top 10 odds. Uh, he's 15 to one to win at FanDuel minus 135 to finish top 10. I want both those. Logano ranks third in aggregate average running position on the short flat tracks this year. Four way sample. He ranks third behind just Chase Elliott and William Byron. That does not include the wins that Logano got at Gateway and Darlington. But Gateway is flat, similar to Richmond. Darlington features massive tire fall off like Richmond. So I have both those races in my model. It helps Logano some, uh, but his track history is also good. He's had a top five average running position in five of the past eight Richmond races. And that spans four different rules packages. So 2018 was one, 2019 was one, 2020 and 2021 were one, and then this, this year as well. Logano does have two career wins here. I like him a lot. And I bet him in both markets. I think that he is a, a great value bet for this week. My model tends to be far too high on Logano, but I've been talking to Nick Giffen, uh, Rotodoc on Twitter. His model also viewed Logano as being uh, better than market. I think he had him as, as fair value of plus 1732, if I recall correctly. So not 15 to one, but I do like my model. If you average with two out, I think he would still show value there too. So Logano, my favorite bet for this week. Harvick is 16 to one. Not as big of a value as Logano, but he nearly won this race back in the spring. He was awesome in Phoenix. He had a fifth place average running position in New Hampshire. Harvick has run well on this track type all year long. I've got Harvick at 8.2% to win this race. His implied odds are 5.9%, which is a pretty big gap. Um, and usually that'd be the biggest gap, but I actually have a bigger gap on Logano for this week because, again, my model's too high in him, but hey, whatever. Uh, Harvick's top 10 odds at FanDuel are minus 170. I have him literally almost dead even. It's like 62.9% versus 62.7 or something, but like he's dead even there. If you can find Harvick at minus 150 or shorter, I would, or uh, longer, I should say, I would take that. Um, 
Minus 150 would be 60% implied odds at 63-ish percent. I would take that. So if you can get him at minus 150, I would take it. Uh, but if it's just minus 170, I'd probably pass and just go with the outright on Harvick there. I would also check available books to see if they're offering manufacturer props. I have forwarded 33.3% to win. If you read my betting guide uh, yesterday on number fire, you'll note that number is now higher, but that's because Kurt Busch withdrew. Uh, that bumped forward up even a bit more. That's probably too high, 33.3%, but at Caesars, you can bet them at plus 430 to win. That's a lot of margin for error. So if you have that, even as short as three to one, I would take that. The forwards have not been good recently outside of Harvick's win in Michigan, but at this track type and similar track types, they have been very good. So I do like uh, the forwards overall to outperform expectations, I think is the best way for me to phrase that. As for the truck series, it's similar to what I had for IRP. Um, we didn't have that on this podcast, obviously, but did talk about it on Twitter. It's a lot of the the older guys. Now, Ben Rhodes not old. He's 24 or 25, but he's a veteran for the truck series, I would say. Uh, the champion last year. I like Rhodes and Grant Enfinger, uh, both 12 to 1 to win this race. That uh, Those odds at FanDuel Sportsbook. I actually bet both of them at 10 to 1 earlier in the week before FanDuel was open. So, oops, my bad, but... Makes me feel better about 12 to 1 for sure if you're betting it now. Enfringer, one IRP. I was on him at 20 to 1 there. It's a very similar track to Richmond. It's a short, flat track with heavy tire fall off, and Richmond checks all those boxes too. Enfringer did win here back in 2020. My model doesn't care about that because it happened in a different team. So that's actually like effectively nullified from my model. It knows that he has good track history, but does downgrade that due to the different equipment. Rhodes is the bigger value between the two guys for me. He has struggled recently, even at IRP, which is concerning to me given how similar these tracks are, but he was a threat to win here in 2020 and 2021. He tends to run well at Phoenix, which is another short flat track. Um, Rhodes is a good dirt racer, and I actually do care about that because the dirt tracks in NASCAR tend to run very similar to a track with heavy tire fall off because they're both just slick. So I actually do care about good dirt racing uh, for this race. I have roads at 11.8% to win and finger is 10.2%. Both those are above their implied marks of 7.7%. that's a pretty big gap again. So I'm pretty far off market on Harvick, Logano roads and Enfinger, which is always scary, but there's a lot of room for error. For my model to be off and still be above market on those guys. I am also showing some value in Stuart Friesen. He is 7.8% for me versus 6.3% implied, but not as high as roads and Enfinger. Freeson, another good road or a good dirt racer, doesn't have the same history at uh, this track as those two guys do. And I do care about track history a bit more at Richmond than other places. So that's why, despite showing value, I'm not there, but I will take Enfinger and Rhodes both at 12 to 1 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So again, Richmond or uh, NASCAR, my best sport, my favorite sport to bet on as well. So we'll, we'll talk about that probably each Thursday, at least until NFL gets rolling. But do you want to at least get that out there on the shows when we can? That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. So a fun night for tonight between Field of Dreams, uh, some NFL preseason games, and uh, getting into more MLB tomorrow and talking about the NFL with J.J. Zachary. And to get that podcast with J.J. or to check out what Joe Ostrowski said about NFL preseason games, search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your Field of Dream bets. Enjoy the game. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk about some season-long player props with J.J. Zacharyson. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 